2023 work session meeting. The time is 6.02 p.m. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, because this is a work session, we uh, do not have any uh, public comment this evening. We have one board presentation, and that is by Charlene Cagle Betts, our village administrator and treasurer. So Charlene, I will turn this board presentation over to you, and then we'll move forward with our public hearing this evening. Treasurer's report for uh, the month of June, for, for June 20th, 2023. Um, we have very preliminary year-end results uh, for May 31st. Uh, our adopted budget revenues were 33.1 million. Uh, we received actual revenues received were 36.8 million. Uh, major revenue drivers, uh, as usual, building permits uh, exceeded the budget um, by 1.9 million. <coughs> mortgage tax by 1.4. There's still one quarter of mortgage tax receipts that have not been received. Um, there's uh, interest, our interest rates at the New York class account have uh, performed exceptionally this year. So we are um, a, a half a million dollars over um, in interest revenue, which is great. Um, so our adopted expenditures, we of course our, our budget was 33.1 million. Expensed and encumbered to date is 32.7. Uh, we have one shortfall. We have about a $71,000 deficit in our legal fees. Everything else has kind of been, uh, um, we've done several budget amendments to cover some shortfalls here and there, but they were all within the budget. And so we're waiting for a last couple of uh, rounds of payables. We're still receiving some invoices for that prior fiscal year, so we're posting some payables back. We have some year-end uh, adjusting journal entries to make, including accrued wages. And um, it may look like it currently we have a $4 million surplus, but I expect that to come down a bit. But I think it's still, we're gonna finish the year strong. Um, I'm, I'm estimating between, you know, two to two and a half million after all the accruals are, are said and done. Um, tax bills are were mailed at the end of May, and we're receiving um, a lot of revenue in. Um, the online payments have helped expedite some of the receipts of those revenues. And um, we've just begun our year-end close. Julie and I are working on that and doing some preliminary work on having our auditors come in to do our audited financials. And um, that's about it. Thank you very much. Any uh, questions or comments from the board? Mr. Young is here in the audience. He has repeatedly reminded us that the language on the tax bill doesn't reflect the correct valuation. I don't think we want to talk about doing a reassessment of the entire village uh, at this particular meeting, but see, seeing as we're moving into a new year, what would be involved in getting the language as Bill, you and Gina discussed with Mr. Young evidently at your tax meeting to reflect actually what that number is in a different way than trying to say the full valuation of the property. Is that possible to do as it pertains to the language of the bill? It's just words on the bill, right? Well, th what I think the value that they have placed on the bill is they take the village assessed valuation and they multiply that by the state equalization rate. Um, so, uh, and that is the amount that's printed on the bill. On the bill, And, and that's, I'm, I'm not sure what other I'm villages not you change the number, but can the description of what it is be changed, or is that the correct description? Th there, there are limitations to that because uh, state law does prescribe some language, but that's not to say that it, it can't be changed or modified mm -hmm. for for clarity. Yeah. We would have to look into that. We'd have to look at it. Uh, I'd be happy to comment. On David, the good news is that you'll have uh, plenty of more meetings. Uh, I may not be here, but I know you will. And, uh, correct, will. and uh, you'll have those opportunities uh, at the next uh, board meeting in July. Uh, the only thing that I'll add is that w this was another great budget that we did. Um, as Charlene pointed out, there likely will be a two to two and a half million dollar operating budget surplus. 
our first budget that we did together, we had a $3.7 million operating budget surplus, which went into a clean water infrastructure fund. Uh, I hope that we can add all or some of this to that fund as well, which can serve as a down payment on our sewer system, which we all know is instrumental to the success of our village, our downtown, and our clean water. Um, and I do wish that I would be here to spend some of that money that we saved after all these years, but I'm happy to have contributed, helped contribute to that, and helped uh, pay down some debt and uh, uh, record some of these uh, unrestricted uh, cash surpluses. So another great budget. Uh, so great job to this board. Uh, we all worked together to make sure we put together that budget. And uh, this, that reflects really the success of good planning and budgeting um, over the last fiscal year. So thank you, Charlene. Uh, we'll move forward uh, to uh, the public hearing. And I will like to make a motion to open this local law, which is a proposal to amend Chapter 116-37A6C2. Is there a second? second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So I'll turn this over to Andrew, who can explain what this is so the public can know, and then you can make public comment. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the impetus for this law revision was at the request of the Board of Architectural Review and Historic Preservation. The proposed code amendment increases the time from 30 days to 45 days for the ARB to propose designation of a landmark after receiving a referral from the building inspector related to a proposed demolition of a non-landmark building. So this only applies where a request for a demolition permit is filed for a non-landmark building. The building inspector then refers it to the ARB <coughs> and the ARB currently has 30 days to consider that and, and if it chooses, take action to uh, seek to, to mark it as a landmark building. The increase from 30 to 45 days is, at, as I said, at the request of the ARB so that they have time to make sure that a meeting occurs in the time of that window because if, for example, a meeting were not held by the ARB, that time could elapse and a building that would otherwise be marked as designated a landmark could be demolished. Can I interrupt, Sage? I, I'm getting a, a text from someone watching at home who says that our mics are not on. Can you can you check on that, please? I don't think it was before, but I think it is now. Okay. All right. Uh, anyway, I'm just res responding to someone who just was was. Robert can hear you, so. Okay. If he can okay. Hear you, All right. Anyway. Sorry. I'm sorry no, for. Good. Yeah. And that's, that's the only change. It's the change of that number. All right. Thank you, uh, Andrew. Are there any comments from the public for this public hearing? Okay. No one in the public. Does not look like there's anyone on Zoom. I, then I'd, I'd just like to add one other thing is that on, uh, on May 11th, the board considered this and resolved to take lead agency status. I confirmed with the village planning director that the matter was referred to the Suffolk County Planning Commission, um, and there was, there was no response uh, objecting to the village's lead agency determination. And there's a resolution, a proposed resolution on the agenda tonight to approve the local law. Excellent, thank you. Any comments from the board? No, I think this is, this is helpful to uh, the uh, ARB that requested this, so I think this is a, a, positive, a positive move. Okay. Excellent, so I'll make a motion to close the public hearing regarding the proposal to amend Chapter 116-37 A6 C2. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. There is one communication to the board. Uh, that is a correspondence from Oz Perlman. Charlene, if you have this in front of you, perhaps you can just summarize this. I think. Yes, we received an email from Oz Perlman. Um, Charlene, make the microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we received an email uh, and they requested that we pr uh, forward to the board um, from uh, Oz Perlman. Um, and uh, they live, they have some small children and they live um, on Bowdoin, by Bowdoin Square. And they are requesting that the village consider um, making some amendments to improve uh, pedestrian <coughs> safety there and suggesting a sidewalk or some type of other solution. Um, and I've asked the DPW superintendent to take a look and see what he might recommend. Mm -hmm. And I'd also like to add that I already spoke to uh, Captain Herto about it, and they will be stepping up enforcement and observing that uh, that street and especially that turn. 
Thank you. Thank you. All right, so this meeting will be a, a bit on the briefer side, so we're already at our su suggested resolutions portion. Charlene, I'll let you take it from here, and thank you again. Thank you. <clears throat> Resolution number one, resolved that the claims for the warrant dated June 20th, 2023, totaling $90,309.64. Warrant A1 general fund, $359,053.25. Warrant H1 capital fund, $30,760.18. Warrant T2 trust fund, and $86,730.61. Warrant A2 payables are hereby audited and approved. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Unanimous. Resolution number two, resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Incorporated Village of Southampton approve Local Law XX-2023, the proposal to amend Chapter 116-37A6C2. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? What is it? Local law what is it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, unanimous. Resolution number three, resolve the Board of Trustees approves the grant application prepared by Steve Phillips, Jr., superintendent of DPW, to the New York State DEC to fund a tree inventory for all village trees in accordance with the Tree Commission recommendation and the Tree City USA designation for two years in the amount of $75,000 with no match. Is there a motion? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Unanimous. Resolution number four, resolve that the Board of Trustees improves the increase in hourly rate as a result of additional duties assigned for the following Village Hall staff. Megan Sweeney, Treasurer's Office, $24 an hour, effective June 16th, 2023. Noreen McCulley, Village Clerk's Office, $30 an hour, effective June 16th, 2023. Is there a motion? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Unanimous. Where, resolution number five. Whereas the Village of Southampton sponsors the annual Southampton Fest event in coordination with the Southampton Cultural Center and in the past would subsidize and reimburse the Southampton Cultural Center in the event of it generated a loss. The SCC has submitted an accounting of the event for the 2022 showing a loss of $9,422.50 along with their audited financial statements. And now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees approves the Treasurer to reimburse the Southampton Cultural Center in the amount of $9,422.50, the loss generated by the Southampton Fest 2022 event from the Trustees Special Projects Fund A1010 433. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Discussion? Uh, just, yes. I think this was because of the, the poor the, weather the that occurred. Yeah, we did have a nor'easter on the day of the Southampton Fest last year, and it was unfortunate. Um, and uh, just as a side, uh, we've already started our preliminary meetings for the 2023 Southampton Fest, and um, Nancy Kane, our promoter who helps coordinate the event, has already come up with some very um, great ideas on cost cutting. And the tent was a big cost that the village had uh, incurred in the past. And I think that we found a couple of different options that would reduce that. So we're hoping to kind of really reduce the outlay in the future in the event that we have another weather event. How does the village generate income from that, just from donations? Yes, there's donations. So everything runs through the cultural center. So they accept the donations. They write out the checks for all the expenditures. So, um, you know, we've been looking in the last, you know, in recent years, there has not been a, a loss. In fact, it would generate a profit, and that money would stay in their dedicated reserve and be used to offset costs in future events. But um, last year, um, was we were pretty unlucky <coughs> with that. The vendors in the park don't pay a fee for. for yes, they do. Yeah, they do. And, they, and that there's a great amount of sponsors that uh, um, cr uh, generate income as well. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time this has happened. It usually does not. Well, it, well kind of like a break I think in recent thing. years, yeah. Yeah. But uh, generally, there's usually a couple of thousand dollars left over every year mm -hmm. that they use to, to kickstart the next year. Um, but this is the first time that there's been this type of a loss. We, uh, we actually had a great Southampton Fest planned. Everyone did a great job on the, uh, the committee. We had amazing music and other types of activities, but the hurricane happened, so uh, yep. that, was, uh, that helped, uh, yep. helped us with this. Can't do anything about the weather, so. 
unfortunate. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Uh, resolution number six, resolved that the Board of Trustees approves the Mayor or Village Administrator to execute a contract with Clover Cashless Payment System, purchase of equipment terminals, setup and hardware for use at Village Clerk's Office in Coopers Beach for revenue and permit processing. Initial cost enrollment is $6,243.86. Monthly software cost of $2,795 thereafter. Um, we're going to ask for um, an amendment to this resolution. Um, subject to the approval of the village uh, attorney. Um, we received a proposal. They generally would not um, generate a contract unless we electronically approve the proposal. So we have to have the board approve the purchase and then the contract would be reviewed by our village attorney prior to execution. So um, I'm, I'm confused here. So, so are we gonna table this? You no, know, the resolution no. Is, being, is being modified to change it slightly to require uh, subject to village attorney approval. approval. So you so just haven't reviewed the contract. Uh, I just don't have a contract okay. yet. Understood. We don't so have a contract yet. So the, the modified proposed resolution would be resolve the board of trustees subject to village attorney approval, approves the mayor or village administrator to execute a contract with Clover Cashless Payment System, purchase of, of equipment terminals, set up and hardware for use in the village clerk's office and Cooper's Beach for revenue and permit processing. Initial cost with equipment is $6,243.86. Monthly software cost of $27.95 thereafter. May I'll make the motion to amend. Is there, and, and is there a second on the motion second. to amend? Mm -hmm. All in oh. favor? Aye. 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 And on the amended resolution as proposed, is there a motion? Motion to adopt. Second. Second. All in second. favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. None. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Andrew. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> resolution <for> resolution <laughs> 7 resolved that the board of trustees accepts the resignation of village fire department agawam engine company number one member brian mclaughlin with 8.5 five three years of service effective june 16th 2023 is there a motion motion second second all in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed aye. Unanimous. Resolution number eight, resolve the Board of Trustees approves the application for a surf school license for OC surf school locations to be determined, submitted by Luke O'Connor. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All, all in favor? Uh, are, we, are we sure this isn't gonna conflict uh, with other things that are going on at the beaches? And they work the schedule out. They coordinate everything with um, the beach manager and um, I believe that the location, it's not generally not at Cooper's, um, and the location is dependent upon where the sandbars are mm -hmm. at the village, at the, at the different beaches. Um, I think in the past it was, um, was Dune around. Beach, it was Old Town, yeah. it was Crider. It moves around. It moves around, so, um, but they work around anybody else's. Who's, uh, who's, 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 who's res is this? Anybody? No. no. Who submitted this? Um, it's, it's submitted every year. We have our uh, yeah, we, we the surf license. license. By, by Luke O'Connor. Yeah, some issues mm -hmm. with the people for the surf school would park and stay all day mm -hmm. and take away parking from the residents who wanted to use the beach. Is there any way to control that? Uh, there were complaints last year, and um, I we had the surf committee look into it, mm -hmm. and um, they stayed. You know, we 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 had a couple of meetings to discuss, and um, there really w weren't. In, the, the claims weren't really relevant. Sometimes they would, um, there were private, there were folks giving private lessons there um, that really weren't connected with this, these surf schools, which are actually licensed by the village. So. Trustee Stevens and I would uh, add two things. That we had mixed reviews from some surf schools, but uh, Luke O'Connor uh, was one of the best uh, mm -hmm. that we had, very mm -hmm. well organized, and we, we also set up the surf committee to make sure that uh, the surf, this was done at a certain period of time with limited parking and uh, some of the more problematic um, uh, applications are not here. So uh, this, was, this was done uh, again through the process that was set up, but Luke's, okay. Luke's, uh, Luke's really good. Okay. okay, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Unanimous. Resolution number nine, <coughs> resolved that the Board of Trustees approves a request from jo Dr. James Groff, Islamic uh, Center of the Hamptons, to host its annual EID Aid holiday at Agawam Park on Wednesday, June 28, 2023. 
during the hours of 10, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Is there a motion? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Resolution number 10, resolved that the Board of Trustees approves the beach event application for Alexandra Leviant, 70 Murray Lane, on Saturday, July 1st, 2023, at six to, from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. for 100 guests. Parking will be pre-coordinated and, and exception to parking letters will be conspicuously displayed on vehicles during the event. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Unanimous. Resolution number 11, resolve the Board of Trustees approves the temporary closure of Mo Meadow Lane on Tuesday, July 18th, 2023, from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. for the placement of a crane to hoist a rock onto a property of one at one, located at 170 Meadow Lane. This has been pre-coordinated with Stephen Phillips, Superintendent of DPW and Acting Chief Hertel, Suffolk, Southampton Village Police Department. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Second discussion. I think we're going to change this to, to 10, 10 p.m. and have it only closed for six hours. I think the, the request was for a five-hour closure. I think six hours is enough, and I, I, I would prefer to have the road only closed for six hours instead of uh, seven. So there's a, we need a motion to modify the resolution um, to uh, change the time from, ten to, to, from 9, 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. And, and Bill... CPW guys aren't doing this. We're just closing the road. We're just closing the road, but I believe uh, Captain Hertel may have to have some of her staff down there on hand to make sure this this is done properly. So mm -hmm. there is some some work involved by the village, and mm -hmm. I think it's, again they are only requiring five hours, and so I think six hours is is all we need to do. And I, I would rather have it start at 10 o'clock for those that may be coming home from dinner mm -hmm. and don't want to be inconvenienced by the road being shut down. I mean, this is this is for the benefit of one homeowner down there, and I don't think we really need to close the road down for more than six hours, quite honestly. Even though this is going, you know, until 4 a.m., but I think 10 a.m. 10 p.m. is the earliest we should shut the road down. And there wouldn't be any interference with anyone trying to get the, to their homes west of 170. No, because they can use Halsey Neck. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Is there a second on the motion to modify? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And on the motion as modified to 10 p.m.? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Um, there's one mayoral appointment. Uh, resolve the mayor appoints and the Board of Trustees approve Lisa Gooley to the position of part-time justice court clerk for the summer season 2023 at a rate of $22 per hour effective June 16, 2023. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Unanimous. That concludes the resolution portion. Okay. Thank you very much. A very brief uh, meeting. We'll uh, conclude with uh, comments from board members. So we'll start with Trustee Aresta. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I'd like to, uh, first of all, thank you for your years of service on this board. And I know you and I have had our ups and downs, but for the most part, uh, it's um, it's a good experience for me, and uh, on behalf of the uh, board of trustees, I'd like you to, I would like to present you with this proclamation, if I may. May I read it? Yeah, free. Yeah. Okay. Since you, you're usually on the, the other right. end of this, but uh, whereas in 2019, Jesse Warren was elected mayor of the village of Southampton and began a two-year term marked with accomplishments and leadership that evolved into a four-year commitment of service to this community. Highlights of his tenure include shepherding the village through the coronavirus pandemic, leading the initiative to clean up Lake Agawam, creating the Sewer District Task Force, and implemented fiscal budget transparency and reducing taxes. And whereas, Jesse has initiated, instituted the update of the village comprehensive plan, launched the Southampton in the Streets initiative, created vacant storefront legislation, installed the C Click Fix Constituent Regarding Reporting Act, formed the Budget and Finance Committee to help reduce spending and stabilize taxes, streamlined the signed permit application process to assist the Village Southampton 
business owners, and whereas, in appreciation for four years of dedicated service to the residents of Southampton Village now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Gina Aresta, Deputy Mayor of the Village of Southampton, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, joins with the community in offering this proclamation to Jesse M. Warren, and in so doing so, offer him our thanks for his leadership, dedication, and efforts in serving our community. A witness thereof, we here unto set our hands on this 20th day of June in the year of the Lord, 2023. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And with that, wishing Thank you all the luck and happiness in the next chapter in your life. Thank you. Thank you. So is there four more proclamations is or just, just <laughs> one on the <laughs> Okay, thank you for this. You're uh, very welcome. We'll call thank on you. uh thank you. Uh, we'll call on Trustee uh, Robin Brown. Trustee Brown had just texted me to state that she has a poor connection, so she will be um, uh, not making any comment tonight. Okay, we'll go to Trustee Banger. Um, I just wanted to thank um, all the uh, voters for their participation last week. It was a very big turnout. I want to thank very much the voters for passing the, uh, the LOSAP, increasing the benefits for the volunteer firemen in the village. Uh, increasing that uh, for 40 years. I know that the volunteer firemen deserve that in the village for their dedication uh, to, to uh, again, protecting all of us here in the village and in the fire district at large. Uh, I also want to announce uh, that we obviously have the 4th of July parade coming up, and uh, I had someone want me to point out that there will be, uh, at the First Presbyterian Church, the annual hot dog sale uh, uh, available at that time with cold drinks, baked goods, chips, and much more. And uh, so I, I did tell a, a, a constituent that that would be available and that we hope that everyone will be a, a participant in the 4th of July parade. I think it's the largest on Long Island, uh, and that will be on the 4th of July. And uh, look forward to seeing everyone there. Thank you very much. Kick off at 10 a.m. Kick off at 10 a.m. Thank you, Trustee Manger. Uh, Trustee Stevenson. Thank you, Mayor. I I'd like to second Ms. Trustee Manger's comments regarding the election. It's uh, a wonderful exercise in democracy uh, to see uh, everybody come out and vote. Our, our turnout, I think, was close to 50%, which uh, is pretty amazing uh, on a national level. It's considerably lower, so everybody was engaged uh, in making their voices heard. And in this village, every vote counts. So it was, uh, it was uh, very inspiring to be a part of that. I'd also like to thank uh, Village Clerk Kathy Sweeney and her great team for doing a yeah. tremendous job mm, of, uh, of just exercise, of organizing and, and handling all the paperwork and all the, everything that went into making the election process run very, very smoothly. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd also like to second what Trustee Arresta said. Uh, congratulations and thanks for doing an excellent job. Um, you really could not have worked any harder at it, and I thank you for that. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Stevenson. Um, I will uh, conclude with uh, with a few remarks, and uh, I will just say, um, you know, many people uh, may not realize this, but uh, prior to uh, running for office and participating in village government, um, I never studied government. I actually didn't even have an interest in politics. Uh, but uh, uh, recently, I was uh, compelled to get involved uh, because I cared about the community and I felt that I had something to give. And um, in 2019, I uh, got a petition and I got enough signatures to get on the ballot. And we ran a good campaign and by the graces of God, I somehow managed to uh, get 45 more votes than the person I ran against, um, who was a fine mayor. Um, and who also cared deeply about the village. And uh, for that, I was blessed with the opportunity to serve the community. And when I took office in 2019, uh, there was a big job ahead of us. Uh, we had more vacant storefronts than ever before. Uh, in 2018, uh, we learned that Lake Agawam was the second most polluted lake in the entire state. Uh, we 
had rising property taxes each and every year for 20 years. And we had a series of overdevelopments that took place, among other, th among other things. And we move forward together to try to tackle some of those solutions. And I'm obviously proud to say that in 2023, I think whether you agree with me or not agree with me on certain policies uh, and whatever your position is, uh, that we can say together, uh, and thanks to the work that we've all done, uh, that the village is in better shape today than it was four years ago. Our downtown is more vibrant. There's more activity, more businesses, more people contributing. We've made slow but steady progress and more to come in the future on water quality. We have curbed some of the overdevelopment, but there is still more work to do. We've done a lot of good uh, in the community and we're very proud of what we've accomplished. And the reason why we can be so proud of what we accomplished uh, is thanks to all of the hardworking men and women and the many village employees across departments of this village. Just in this building alone, we have outstanding clerical and administrative employees. We've got people who are front and center and people like Daniel Burns uh, who work behind the scenes as our tax receiver. We've got people like Mimi Michelle Guerin Karen Bontempo, who makes sure that our village beach passes are done and done in the most professional uh, and streamlined manner that you can think of. And I know that every year our beach permit process gets better and better. We've got people like Jada who joined us uh, as graduates and now they have become seasoned professionals. We've got a building department that's responsible for a large portion of our revenues outside of taxes. And our senior building inspector, Tin, has a large weight on his shoulder, and he's able to come in each and every day and help this village succeed, along with an outstanding staff, such as Ruby and Tajay, who've just done an outstanding job, Derek, who we hope returns, other building inspectors, and people like Jackie Allen or Diane, who've actually loved this village so much, they've come back to help. I'm particularly proud of our public works department, who has just performed as good or better than ever before. When we look at the leaf pickups, the plowing, the beaches that are world class, they have done an outstanding job. And so while we like to take credit for that, it's really because of them. Uh, when I see our custodial workers come in each and every day, I also could be more proud of them. It's a, a pleasure and highlight each and every day to see Johnny come in this building, or people like Marianne Wright or Brenda Pinckney, or our outstanding parks department that did the best spring cleanup ever. We have a lot to be proud of, but we can keep on moving forward. And I also wanted to thank all of our first responders, police, fire, EMS, for keeping our village safe and dispatchers each and every day. Uh, some of these uh, from top to bottom, from our chief down to our patrol officers, from our paid professionals to our volunteers, we have the very best team on the whole East End, Long Island, and even the state. And so a lot of the success that we like to talk about is because of them. I also wanted to thank our land use board members and our uh, attorneys on staff. Uh, these land use board members get paid next to nothing and they volunteer their time uh, each and every board meeting. Sometimes they stay past midnight. And part of the reason why we've been able to curb some of the overdevelopment and have not seen a luxury condo complex or luxury townhome complex get built or approved over the last four years is in part uh, because of them and also to our new senior planner, Alex Wallach. So we also have a lot to thank with our land use board members. Never did I ever think that I would have the opportunity uh, to serve as mayor of my own community where I live and where I love. And uh, I was blessed with that opportunity. And as uh, everyone knows, I uh, gave everything I had to the job, uh, so much so that uh, I am just happy to say that there's not any more I could have given. And uh, I think that was on you know, everyone knows each and every day with the high level of constituent services that we have developed now, that will stay forever. Um, we, we run this village much more efficiently and much more differently than we did in the past. And those are all things that I hope will stay uh, for the future in this village. I'll just conclude by saying a mentor of mine told me just yesterday that there are two, two great jobs to have. The second best job is to be mayor. Uh, it's a great job. You get to serve your community uh, and you get to help each and every day. And that's uh, a job, Bill, that you will have soon, the second best job. But the first best job that you get to have is the job of former mayor. 
because you get to bask in all the glory, you get to be an advocate for the community and the citizens, but you don't actually have to address any of those problems. That will be for this board moving forward. And uh, I'm proud to say that I now have the best job and uh, I will now serve this community as a citizen um, and I will do what I can in that role, which is the most important role, but I'm proud to have served the community, uh, which I love, and did so with everything that I had. So I uh, wanted to thank you, the residents, the village employees, the stakeholders, the business owners, and everyone in between. So with that said, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Is there a second? second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you.